So gang, to start out for this uh, pinch pot demonstration, I just want to kind of show you what it is that I'm going to have available to me uh, during this first part. And really, it's very minimal tools. Basically, what I've got here is I've got my uh, wire tool, which we talked about in that uh, tool description. Um, that's going to enable me to cut clay off of the big block. Um, I've got my needle tool that's right here. Uh, that needle tool is something that's going to help you for uh, scratching or scoring and slipping once we get to that as well. And then I've also got just a piece of cardboard. This piece of cardboard I'm going to use as a board for me to be able to put my work on once I'm finished with it uh, so that I can move it around and I don't have to actually pick up that specific that piece of clay. Um, so this just enables me to move it around. Um, also, we're going to be covering up this object at one point in time as well. And when we cover that thing up, we want to be able to uh, basically lift up the object, get the plastic underneath it, um, so that way it doesn't lose moisture. We'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later. The reason why I'm using cardboard like this is because I'm pretty sure that a bunch of us have this around. I know that since quarantine um, and uh, since uh, we've all been working from home and everything like that, I've got a lot of cardboard boxes around because I'm ordering a lot from online retailers. So anyways, that's why I'm using cardboard. Then the, uh, the last thing I wanna talk about is this big board that I have down here. Um, what you really wanna make sure that you do um, is don't do any sort of work on your nice furniture. If you're doing any sort of work on your nice furniture, there's the potential that you can actually, um, you know, do some destruction essentially to that furniture. So I'm working on a wooden table, but I've got this nice wooden board that's on it. I picked this board up, I think it was less than $6 from Home Depot. It's about two feet by two feet. Um, I just slide it and put, I have a certain spot at the house that I put it. Um, it's really thin, it's probably only about a half inch. Um, really easy to maneuver around, but it allows me to do all my work on this board and get the clay on this board so that, that way it's not getting all over our nice furniture. The other thing you can do is you can work outside. Okay, gang, so before me I've got a, a nice big chunk of clay. This is clay that I've used in the past. Um, it's clay that I have left over from uh, last semester. Uh, it's a little bit different color than the clay that you guys are using, but don't worry about that. All it is is a different color, a little bit different consistency than what you guys are using, but it's still a nice smooth clay body like the clay you guys picked up. Um, and so um, with that, uh, we have a nice chunk of clay. I've actually exposed the clay, pulled the bag away from it. Notice that I haven't pulled it completely out of the bag. What we actually wanna do is we're gonna grab this wire tool and once we get this wire tool, when you use the wire tool, you hold it tightly, right? What I like to do is I wrap it around my fingers just once or so, and then I can actually use my thumbs like so. And what we wanna do for this pinch pot is we wanna cut it off in a cube. A cube is a three-dimensional representation of a square, so just think of it in that sense. If it comes out a little bit more like a rectangle or a rectangular prism, that's okay. We just want it to be close to that cube. And one of the things I do is I'll just kind of push down on the clay like so, and then I'll pull it towards myself. And when I pull it towards myself, it gets a nice straight cut, and then I can pull that block off of my main block of clay. I can set that big block of clay aside. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this into a smaller piece because we want it to only be about like baseball to softball size. Softball's a little bit large, okay? We want it to be more like baseball size. So I'm gonna come here again and I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna cut that all the way down to the board. And then I've got a nice chunk of clay. It's kind of like a cube, all right? Once we've got that cube, then basically we're gonna take that cube and we're gonna hold it in our hand and we're gonna start changing the shape of that cube and we wanna turn, want turn it into a sphere. A sphere is the three-dimensional representation of a circle. Okay, so I've got that cube of clay. One thing that I've done, I uh, didn't show you guys, but I took that bag and I put the bag all the way back around. I wrapped it all up. I wanna make sure that that clay stays moist. So make sure that you do that. Don't leave your bag of clay open, even if it's just a little bit, right? This is air dry clay. This clay will actually dry out while it sits out in the air. And although it's a big chunk of clay, it'll take a long time for it to dry out. If we end up just leaving it out like that, 
then over time it's just gonna get harder and harder and harder. And as the clay gets harder, it becomes diff more difficult to work with, and then it doesn't do what it's supposed to do with it, which is have this quality that clay has, which is called plasticity, all right? It's plastic. What plastic means is it doesn't mean that stuff that we store our food in, in the fridge. What plastic actually means is that it's pliable, that it will move, that it'll, it'll uh, move around. It's not a, a hard, rigid object. And so with clay, clay, you can take it from being straight like this and you can curve that clay like so. Um, and when you curve it, it will stay together. And that's the plastic or plasticity of the clay is allowing it to do that, all right? And that's because clay is made out of small little platelets. Platelets are flat and they're uh, kind of roundish or ovalish. Think about the platelets that you have in your blood, uh, very similar. But clay platelets are pretty small. It's on a microscopic level. And essentially what happens when we have wet clay is we have two flat objects like this. Let's call those my, these are my platelets. Um, what, the, what, the, what happens essentially is those are kind of touching one another. And maybe they're a little offset or something like that. But what's in between them is water. And that's also on the microscopic level. And so when I go to actually use my clay and try and manipulate it and try and uh, fold it or bend it, if it's plastic, what's happening is those platelets are sliding next to one another. And when they slide, ne slide next to one another like that, that's what gives it that plastic quality. That water is acting like a lubrication. And when the water's gone, and when we get less and less water into that clay, then we lose that plasticity of the clay. And so that's what we're trying to avoid, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this clay and I'm gonna hit it with my hand, a cupped hand, and I hit it with that cupped hand like so, and apply some pressure. We wanna put some pressure into this clay. We want it to get it to start moving. We wanna see that it starts to actually change shape, right? You can see that it's starting to become round. That's what we want to have happen. Okay, if I just go like this and move it in my hands, this is a big mistake that a lot of beginners do, is they move it around like this and they just barely are, they're very timid about how, how they're touching the clay. And when you do that, what you're doing is your hands are actually drawing moisture out of the clay. And what, that, what will happen in that sense is you'll actually dry out your ball of clay on the surface. Then when you start to actually pinch it out and, and turn it into a, a rounded pot or object, what essentially is happening in that sense is um, you are getting, uh, you're taking that moisture out of it and you're gonna get cracks all over the surface of your object. So you wanna do this relatively fast. You wanna turn this thing into a ball of clay with no little folds or anything on it. You wanna turn it into that in about 30 seconds to a minute, okay? Cupped hands, holding it, kind of looking at it as well and seeing where things are happening. And if you get little folds and things like this, okay? Right? What you also can do is you can take a little bit of moisture. Clay is not harmful to, your, to, to get inside of you, to ingest. Um, in, in fact, when it's in this wet stage, it is completely non-toxic. Theoretically, you can eat it, don't eat it, right? Uh, but you can. So you can use a little bit of moisture. All I'm doing there with my the moisture from my uh, mouth is I'm using it to kind of drag my finger across so that my finger slides. That's all it is, right? And then we're gonna continue and turn that into a ball of clay, all right? Once we have a ball of clay, that's where we're gonna start, all right? Mm, I got another little fold here, a little bit of moisture, kind of draw my finger across that area, all right? And as I draw my finger across that area, I can get rid of that little fold or mark that's there, okay? So once I get it to that point, now I'm ready to move on to my next step. So step number one, ball of clay. Step number two, we're gonna put a hole in the middle. The way that we put a hole in the middle is I'm gonna take my hand, cupped hand like this, and then I'm gonna look and find the center, okay? And I'm just gonna poke right there in the middle, right? That looks like it's about in the center. Well, look, you say, Brian, is that still in the center? Not really, because now it's over to that side. I want to find the center of this object as it sits in my hand, okay? That's what's important. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to hold it like so, so I can push against my hand, and I'm going to actually press my finger down into the clay, and I've got to apply pressure, and I want to feel some of that on this portion of my hand, okay? I want to actually feel my finger get near there. I don't want to push so hard that it goes all the way through. That's not what I'm looking for. 
okay? And now we've got a hole that's in the middle. You can see that it's relatively in the center of this object and it goes all the way down inside. You're gonna leave that finger inside of there, right? That thumb inside of there like that. And you're gonna wrap those fingers around that clay. And then we're gonna start doing what this technique is called, which is pinching. And pinching is just doing this, right? I'm moving my hand around in a circle around this object and I'm pinching my outside fingers towards my inside thumb. And as I do this, it's actually opening up the bottom. We're getting a bigger hole inside of there, right? We're getting some finger marks on the outside, which is totally fine. Some people that pinch actually choose to keep those in, that, uh, in their uh, pinch pot and that's kind of part of their aesthetic. And I'm trying not to manipulate the size of the hole too much. A little bit of this hole has gotten larger, um, but I'm gonna try and keep it kind of at bay. I, I don't wanna really make it stretch out. If I keep stretching it out, stretching it out, and the hole keeps getting bigger and bigger, this piece is gonna end up flopping over and it's gonna become a plate, okay? We're not trying to make plates here. We're trying to make some vessels that could potentially hold something. So I'm just manipulating my fingers around there. And this might take you a couple of times, a couple of tries to kind of get this thing going. And right now, as I'm pinching, I'm only pinching it down and it's maybe a little bit more than a half an inch thick, which is pretty thick. So I've already made kind of a pinch pot where you can see that it's actually grown in size. What we're trying to do is actually increase the height of this object and it will in turn start to, um, to start to grow out this direction, okay? So that's what we're attempting to do here. And we don't need to do it all at once. We take little baby steps, okay? I pinched it all the way so far and gotten it to this point. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go back to the bottom and start pinching again. But the different thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hold it kind of on an angle like this and I'm gonna reach my fingers down inside and I like to use these two fingers. That's just a personal preference for me. And I like to go inside of there. And now I'm actually pinching from the inside of this object and pushing towards my outside hand or towards the hand that's cradling. And notice I don't have a flat hand. I have a curved hand. That's what I wanna have happen here. I wanna have a curved hand because I'm trying to make a curved pot. If I wanna make a flat pot, I end up using a flat hand. And is there anything wrong with a flat pot? No, there's not. We can have a base on this that's not rounded. We could have a base on it that's flat, okay? But notice that I'm doing all this while I'm holding onto this object in my hand. I'm not setting it on the table like so and pinching around in a circle like this, okay? That's a little bit more difficult to do. You can do all of this pinching before you even start shaping anything and getting it to be exactly what you want it to be. You can do all that pinching while it's just kind of in your hand, all right? And so I continue pinching. And I'm gonna keep going, and I'm overlapping my fingers as I do this pinching. That's really important, because I wanna make sure that I hit all the spots, and I'm feeling in between, I can even change hands, right? I mean, I'm pretty ambidextrous, um, but if you start doing this and start, um, you know, manipulating clay with not just one hand, but with both, then you'll kind of get that feel of what it's like to do it with both of your hands. Right? And so I'm thinning this out over and over again as I come through here and trying to get it. And I'm feeling for what that thickness feels like between my fingers. And because I'm pinching it about the same each time, if you look at this object, it's got a pretty flat rim, right? You see how nice and flat that rim is there, okay? And that's because I'm pinching the same each time I pinch. And I've got a secret, right? It's not really a secret, but I'll tell you um, what that secret is or what that trick is, and that's to pinch in a rhythmic fashion. So you notice, and if you go back on this video and watch it again, you'll notice that as I'm pinching, I'm pinching like this. Pinch, 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 pinch. Kind of like there's a metronome or a song that's playing in the background. And sometimes when I have music going while I'm doing this, I actually like to listen to that music and pinch along with the rhythm of that music, right? So I've already come up to the rim, so now I go back and I'm gonna hold it on its side again and I'm gonna get my fingers inside of there and I'm gonna start thinning it out a little bit more. One of the bigger mistakes that uh, beginning students make with a pinch pot is that they make that bottom portion of it way too thick. The bottom portion should be the same thickness as the wall portion. Right? So we really have to try and get that sensitivity as to what the clay feels like between our fingers and the uh, bottom of my hand 
or once I get up a little bit further and I start to pinch, I'm feeling for what that pinch feels like, how much clay is in between my fingers right here versus right here a little bit higher, okay? I've come up the wall of the pot a little bit here so I can feel with, they're like little finger, little gauges, right? I can feel like I'm like, ooh, that's kind of thin there, but it feels about the right thickness. Right here, it's a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna pinch, right? So think about that as you're going around in this circle and start pinching. Now, in terms of shape, it doesn't have to be like a half circle, which is what I'm kind of creating right now. Don't worry about what kind of end result you get, uh, because for this first portion of the project, this first portion of the pinch pots, we're making three pinch pots, and each one of these pinch pots needs to relate to the other ones. And relation is something that we're gonna be looking up, right? And we're gonna be doing something and trying to figure out what relate, what relation means, okay? But for now, we kind of just gotta get in here and start pinching and starting to feel what this clay feels like between our fingers, okay? And you'll notice that I'm kind of doing this and kind of lifting it up in the air. That's just, and then cradling it as, as it comes down. That's just so that I can get this thing to move around, okay? So here we are, moving around, still getting it. And you'll see, I've got some little cracks, little surface cracks that are in this thing. I don't know how easy it is for you guys to see. I'll kind of go around pretty slowly in a circle here so you can see what's happening. You can see that big, bigger crack right there, right? Don't worry about that, okay? You're gonna get some cracking. Right? If you get a little bit of cracking, like here on this rim portion, again, a little bit of moisture, and we just kind of use our finger and kind of drag it over the surface and press. We call that compression, right? Compressing the rim or compressing the clay, pushing just ever so slightly to allow all those little clay particles to start to smear into one another, and we can get those cracks to go away. Now, if I come back here and I get my sponge and I get it really wet and start to do the same thing, all I'm doing is taking away the clay and leaving behind all the little sandy bits, okay? You don't wanna to add too much water. That's why using your uh, tongue and using the moisture that we have in our mouth is actually a little bit easier for me to do because then it allows me to control how much moisture I'm using. We don't wanna use a lot of moisture. And that's another uh, thing that people kind of make a mistake when they're first learning how to do this is they start to add too much moisture and they're like, oh man, I'm getting all this cracking. I better get that sponge out, go take it over the sink, get it wet, start squeezing water on it. And now all of a sudden, you got a mess all over your house. You got a super saturated piece of clay. You can barely hold on to it because it feels like it's about to fall apart. So you just have to be careful with that. And I'm just looking around here. If I wanna get rid of any little cracks on the outside, I do the same thing, just draw that finger across. Um, using a little bit of moisture. A lot of times when I'm uh, teaching students, I call this, you know, my mouth, I call it my moisture factory. We always make moisture, right? So just use that, right? Use that to your advantage. If it kind of grosses you out, okay, you can use some water, but I would, what I would suggest you do is get like an old salsa container or like a sauce container from the store uh, or you know from a, a takeout place or whatever. And what you wanna do is just kind of use that and add a little bit of moisture, or a little bit of water inside of that little container. And we're talking a little bit. I mean, I'm take, talking taking like a little salsa cup or something or a barbecue sauce cup and just putting about that much water in the bottom of it. So that way you can just kind of dip your finger in slightly, right? If you have a big cup of water, now we're talking about using too much water, okay? Really important that we don't use too much water in this stage, okay? So that's what we wanna do to make our pinch pots. And the one that I've made, like I said, is kind of um, about the same width as it is tall, but you might may end up making a pinch pot that's a little bit wider than it is tall. Or you might end up making a pinch pot that's a little bit taller than it is wide. And that's okay, it doesn't matter. Now I'm gonna come back to this rim area because everywhere kind of feels like it's about the right thickness. And now I'm just coming back to this rim area and finishing up the rim a little bit, making the rim a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner essentially. And it gives this kind of appearance to the object that the object itself is lighter, right? If we have a big old thick robust rim, um, then sometimes people will look at that and be like, ooh, that's gonna be a heavy object when I go to pick it up. If it's a nice thin, 
kind of rim area, then people might look at that and be like, oh, this is gonna be light when I pick it up. So if they go to pick it up and it's got an, a thinner rim like this, they're gonna expect it to be really lightweight. But if you left a whole bunch of weight down on the bottom, like we still have a big thickness of clay down there, right? Then when you pick it up and you're like, ooh, that feels a little bit on the heavy side, right? This is gonna be heavier right now than it's gonna end up being once all the water dries out of it, okay? But right now, because there's water in there, it's gonna feel a little bit heavier. But when you look at an object, we have this, um, we have this innate ability as human beings. Our brain kind of tells us thing. If, if, if we look at something and it looks like a piece of paper, we expect that piece of paper to be light. When we look at an object that has a thin rim, we expect that to be relatively light, but our brain does a calculation and it's like, you know what? I can tell that's made out of clay, not plastic. So this must be heavier than a plastic version of this thing that's the same size and the same thickness. Then if you see it made in metal, you would look at that, your brain would kind of do this for you and your brain would say, hey, that's made out of metal. It feels cold to the touch when I put my fingers on it. It must be made of metal, so therefore, the same object made out of metal in this same size and same thickness would feel what? Heavier, right? So our brain does those calculations for us. What you wanna make sure you do when you're making an object is make an object and pinch it enough and get your uh, wall thickness thin enough that it feels like it's the right weight, right? When our eyes look at it and they say, hmm, this feels about right, okay? That's what we're going for. Uh, the other thing that we're going for is we're going for even wall thickness. If we have uneven wall thickness, when these things go into kilns and get fired, or even when they just start to dry out in the air, um, you might start get crack, start to get cracking in your clay because clay shrinks when it dries. Um, this kind of clay probably shrinks about 12 to 14 percent. Okay, it's a pretty big percentage. And so because of that, uh, it, it, when it dries like that, if we have areas that dry faster and areas that, then that's when we run into an issue and we start to get that cracking. Um, so if we have even wall thickness, everything will hopefully end up drying evenly. And I even help that along as I'm uh, drying my objects. One of the things that I do is I go, when I first start letting this piece dry, I actually hold it like this and I put it upside down. We'll get this, uh, this piece out here. I'll put it upside down like this because then I can come back and I can look around and I can see this object, okay? I'll, I'll pull it away this way. Um, and I can see if there's any cracks that are in here. I can start to kind of smooth those cracks out while it's just sitting here. And now I don't have to um, have it in my hand. When it's in my hand, it's, it tends to start to flop around a little bit uh, while it's in the wet stage. Okay. And then also look at this when we have a board to move it on, look at, I can move this thing around. I can set it over here. I can bring it back to myself. I could do all sorts of things. Okay. All right. There's going to be some examples up for you guys to take a look at of what, of objects that relate to one another. But like I said, we've got, we're going to make three objects, three pinch pots, and they need to some have some sort of relation. Uh, we're going to talk about relation a little bit. I'm gonna give a little bit of a lecture on, um, on a relationship, and we're gonna look at some examples. So until then, you, you know, you might want, you wanna make sure that you watch that video on relationship before you start thinking about what it is that you want to make, okay? All right, so there we go. I've got a nice kind of finished pinch pot right now, it doesn't have any sort of foot right now on it. So for some object like this, I'm going to either have to create a foot or I'm going to have to flatten the bottom somehow. And when I flatten the bottom, you want to do it when the clay is really kind of in the wetter stage right now. So for example, I could take this and I could put it, I probably would do it on the board rather than the, um, the cardboard. I could take this and I could set it on the table and I start, can start pushing down from the inside to make a nice flat bottom. Or maybe I want my objects to sit like this or on an angle like this, right? Who's to say that we need to have everything straight up and down like this, right? That's not, there's no rule in life that says that that has to happen, but we just tend to see that 
with objects, with uh, utilitarian objects made out of clay. Uh, but that doesn't mean that's what you have to do for this project. We're making pinch pots. We're using this technique. And then I want you guys to become creative, essentially. And I want you guys to think about what is it that I can make? Uh, you'll see some uh, examples of this, like I said. And one of the examples that I'm going to be showing is a piece that is not functional. It's not utilitarian. You're not going to use it to eat, to eat your cereal out of or to put any sort of dip inside of, to dip some chips in there. That's not necessarily what we need to do for this, okay? Um, you, this is an art class. That means you guys get to be creative and you, need, you get to do whatever it is that you wanna do. Maybe you do wanna have objects that relate to one another that are utilitarian objects, that are what we're used to seeing, and that's okay also, right? It's just up to you as to what you want to do, right? We just need to make sure that we make them using this method, which is called pinching or pinch pots, okay? We're pinching our fingers together to create these uh, pieces, okay? Starting out from that ball of clay, that lump of clay, turning it into a ball, putting the hole in the center. Then once the hole is in the center, wrapping our fingers around, starting to pinch from the bottom, going around, remember to use rhythmic pinches. That way we pinch the same each time. That's what that rhythmic thing does, is it allows our brain to pinch and pinch in one direction. Uh, or sorry, pinch in, in uh, the same uh, the same rate essentially, but also the same uh, depth. When I pinch and I start to pinch rhythmically, my brain just kind of takes over for me and I pinch the same each and every time and I apply the same amount of pressure to the clay each and every time, which will result in an even wall thickness to my object, right? This piece, I haven't actually done anything for a base because I'm gonna show you guys how to put a foot on this object. We're just gonna do that as a separate uh, portion, okay? Also, what I have to do is if I want to put a foot on this, I actually need to wait for it to stiffen up a little bit because right now it's very soft. And even me just putting it its own weight on itself down there on the, um, on the, on the bottom there, uh, what happened is it actually flattened out the bottom and I don't want the bottom to be flat for what, I, what it is that I'm doing, okay? So I'm gonna take this, get my board out, um, or my piece of, uh, it can be a, a piece of wood if you want it to be, a smaller piece of wood, or if you don't have anything like that laying around the house, you probably have some cardboard. So using cardboard is gonna help out quite a bit, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? I hope so. We'll have another portion of this in just a moment. 